Hello class and welcome back. Today we've got some uh, lines and volume to play with. Pay attention, um, we're going to go through multiple concepts pretty quickly, but as long as you stay with me in this video and the, the videos in this series, you should be just fine. Um, and if you pay attention in class, you'll be even better. Alright, here we go, let's get started. First I want to talk about what these lines right here are. These lines are, there's a name for that. There's a name for when lines cross paths. When one line crosses over or touches another line. That name is intersecting. So yes, that is the answer. These lines are intersecting. One more time with me. Intersecting. And there are other kinds of lines that we will learn. Pay attention to the next couple of videos to make sure you see all the important ones. Here's a line, but it's a line that's in a circle. When a line is in a circle, it has a special name. Now, when a line touches one end of the circle and goes all the way to the other end, like that, it's known as a chord. Some lines are called radius, other lines are called diameter, but not a line that looks like this. One that just touches one end to the other end, it's not that special, all it's doing is just touching two parts of the circle, that's known as a chord. Remember that. Watch it again if you have to. Let's move on. Here's something else you guys should know. How are these figures related? Uh, this isn't about lines. This is about shapes. But we've talked about this already, and I'm just making sure you've got it in your head. Now, there are three things here. Congruent, similar, but not congruent, and neither similar nor congruent, not either of them. Similar means they're like the same shape, but maybe not the same size. Congruent means that they are the same shape and the same size. But if they're not the same shape at all, like this circle and this octagon, then they're not similar or congruent. So if they're just completely different, make sure you realize not similar, not congruent, they're completely different. And I'll show you examples of uh, the other stuff in the next video. And last but not least, we want to talk about volume. Uh, volume is how much space there is inside of a 3D shape. Now right here, when it's all in cubes, it's kind of easy to see. You can kind of count the cubes inside the shape. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Cool. This a uh, little shape right here has a volume of nine cubic units. Probably should have typed that. Oh well. Nine cubic units. But sometimes it's not so obvious how many little blocks are inside of a shape. So you may have to use little math skills. If we have if we have to find the volume of this shape what we can do, instead of counting or trying to count, oh, I wonder how many blocks can fit inside. No, 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 no. Don't waste your time doing that. Instead, multiply every single dimension, all three. Height, which is the going up dimension. Width, which is the how far across dimension. And depth or length, or which is the other dimension. There are three dimensions to worry about here, and you have to multiply them all. Start by doing any first two, like two times two. Two times two, easy enough, is four. But you're not done, because you still have to multiply it by the third and final dimension. Another two in this case. Four times two is eight. Now we know that the volume of this shape is eight, centimeters 
cubed. Area is squared. Volume is cubed. Going back up here, we can see that multiplying is always right if you do it the, the right way, of course. You see, we counted nine cubic units. You see that. But if we wanted to multiply, we could have. How far is this side? One, two, three. And how far is the other dimension? One, two, three. And how far up does it go? It only goes up one. So if we multiplied that, we'd get three times three, which is nine, times one, which is still nine. So as you can see, counting the cubic units inside is kind of like the slow way and sometimes the incorrect way, if you're not careful, of just simply multiplying all three numbers that you get for the dimensions of a 3D shape. Here's a look at um, the pop guide. What are these lines called? What do you suppose this line across is? You might not be able to solve that with a little extra help. I told you what one kind of line is, but there are others. How are these figures related? Are they similar? Are they congruent? Are they not similar or congruent? And what's the volume of this shape? If you can figure out these four things, you've learned something today. Pay attention to the next series in the videos. Uh, watch all three to get a deeper understanding of these topics. I'll see you in the second one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.